Hey everybody, it's Professor Williams and we're going to look at percentiles and quartiles today. First, a disclaimer. There are several procedures for calculating percentiles and quartiles. So the method I'm going to use in this video rounds up for a non-integer value of the index and then averages the index and the value what right beyond the index for integer values of i. And I'll sh explain what that means in a second. First thing is there's a three-step procedure for locating any percentile, decile, quartile. We're going to arrange the data in increasing order from smallest to largest. Then we have to calculate an index. An index simply points us to the data set to look for an observation that is located in the index location. We find that by taking P, the percentile of interest, divided by 100, multiply that by n, the number of observations in our data set. In 3, we have to make a decision. If our index is not an integer, whole value, then we round up to the next whole value. But if i is an integer, a whole value, then we're going to average the observations in the index position and then the index position right below it, which is i plus 1. So here I have some salaries and they're in thousands of dollars and I have 13 observations. You'll see they're from smallest to largest and I've simply labeled them X1 through X13. It keeps me from having to count up and down. And we're going to use this formulas for the index where P is the percentile of interest and is the number of observations. So if I look for the 90th percentile, I'm going to take 90 divided by 100, and when I get that, I'm going to multiply it by 13, which is my n, and that's going to give me my index value. So we said that we were finding the 90th percentile. I'm going to divide that by 100. I'm going to multiply that by 13, and when I get that, that's going to come out to 11.7. So this is a non-integer value. In other words, it's not a whole number. So the rule is I'm going to round up to 12. Now I need to find, remember this is the index, so I need to find what value resides in the 12th position from top to bottom, and that's this. So now I know that um, the 90th percentile is $192,000. And what that tells me is 90% of my values in my data set are smaller than $192,000. Let's look at another. So now let's look for the 25th percentile. Remember the 25th percentile is the same thing as Q1. Right? They're four quarters in a um, dollar, so one quarter is equal to 25 percentiles. So we're going to calculate our index by taking i. We're going to divide 25 by 100, multiply that by the number of observations we have to give us this index value. So we were looking for our 25th percentile. So we take the 25, divide that by 100, multiply that by our 13, and that comes out to 3.25. Because this is not an integer or a whole number, we're simply going to round up to the next whole number, which is 4. So we're going to violate the traditional mathematical rounding rules, and we're going to move up to 4, so I know that the first quarter, or Q1, is located in the fourth position, which is this one. Remember, when we're looking at this position, we always start at the top and count down, so I know that that's 141,000. And so what that tells me is that 25% of the values in this data set are below or under 121,000, and that's the location of Q1. 
All right, one more. So we want to look this time for the 75th percentile. Remember, 75 pennies is the same thing as 3 quarters. So this is Q3. So I'm going to take my 75th percentile, 75 divided by 100, multiply that by 13 to give me the index value to tell me where to go over here in my data set. So we said we were looking for the 75th percentile, so we said 75 divided by 100. Multiply that by the 13 values that we have in our data set gives us 9.75. Since this is not an integer, I'm going to round up to 10. I'm going to find the 10th value in my data set, and I can see that that is Q3 is located at a salary of $171,000. So what if we had had one that came up to an integer? Let's say that we performed the calculation of P divided by 100 times N, and it ended up being 6. Now what I'm going to do, remember this is i, i plus 1 is 7. So I will take and I will average the 6th and the 7th value. So in order to find this unknown whatever it is, I would take 146 plus the 152, divide it by 2 and the result would be my value. Just remember that when finding percentiles and quartiles, your answer may differ based on how you're calculating it. Um, in other words, software programs often calculate it differently than we do manually, but this is how we follow the basic um, index procedure for percentiles and quartiles. As always, I hope you found this useful and thanks for watching.